So last night, driving back from Antelope Hunt, I, uh, I get pulled over. As I was driving, I was, I was kind of hugging the center line just a little bit, but like no big deal. Anyway, get pulled over, cop walks up. He's like, hey, do you know why, you pull, why I pulled you over? I was like, I have no idea. He's like, uh, well, you've been doing some sporadic driving. And then he asks, have you had anything to drink uh, tonight? And I was like, uh, no, sir. I've said I've, I've had water and I've had a Black Rifle coffee. That's all I've had all day. And then he asked me to get out of the car and I have to do a sobriety test. And then let me preface all this by saying I absolutely support uh, law enforcement and cops and um, respect what they do. And I understand why, why he pulled me over, but I, I didn't think I was really driving sporadically at all. So I, I get to walk the line. It was my first time walking the line. Then I had to do a few more um, physical tests, like holding my leg up in the air, six inches up in the air, and counting up to like 20. And then he said that I didn't actually pass either of those, which is shocking. I must have really bad balance or something. I thought I passed them with uh, flying colors, and then I had to blow into the breathalyzer, and I blew a zero. The whole spectacle took uh, about 45 minutes, and but this vlog is not about law enforcement. This vlog is going to be about basically tips or do's and don'ts of things uh, to do or not to do while you're elk hunting. Basically, how to be a ninja. So let's uh, let's dive into tip number one. <coughs> All right, uh, first tip is to not make a bunch of human noises. If you've got a runny nose, wipe it on your arm. Don't go. <laughs> I say this because half of the elk I've killed, I've literally walked up on when I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't calling elk, I wasn't chasing bugles, I was just sneaking through the woods. And because I wasn't making a bunch of human noises, I got an opportunity on an elk. So tip number one, cut those human noises. And tip number two, be a ninja in the woods. Again, reduce human sound and cover up your footsteps or cover up the sound of your footsteps. Um, either take your shoes off, sneak in socks. I prefer these, these are safari sneakers. These are a basically like a Gerber fleece, like shag carpet bottom, fleecy top, super quiet, and they go over your shoe. When you're in cactusy country or pokey country or you just don't wanna lose or misplace your shoes, this is an amazing bet. All right, my next tip is to keep your rangefinder right here, attach your bino harness, and most importantly, keep it on a short tether. And the reason I do this is so I can come up, I can range whatever I want, and then instead of having to search for the pocket, or even worse, like put it in my pants pocket, reach way down, put it in my pants pocket, I can just let go because it's on a little short tether. I can go, I can draw my bow. So doing this is just gonna reduce that extra movement and when you're in tight on elk, when you're sub 50 yards, the less movement, the better. So my next tip is to make sure your pant legs aren't rubbing together. Because when they do, they make a whoosh, 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 whoosh sound and you can hear it from like 200 yards away. And often when you're the one making the noise, you don't even know you're making the noise. So. Um, one trick there is to have a buddy just tell you, like, hey, like, like ask him, be like, hey, are my pant legs rubbing together? And if they are, consider widening your stance or get some quiet pants. So the ones I'm rocking, these are the Sitka Apex pants. They have a built-in knee pad. They're, uh, they're really soft, really quiet, don't make any noise, amazing bow hunting pant. I heard a bugle. That was an exciting evening of elk cutting there. <laughs> Got pretty close. My final tip is all about scent. So 
in my opinion, you just cannot beat an elk's sense of smell, but you can do things to reduce the amount of scent that you're putting out. So things that I avoid are cooking in my clothes. So if you get back to camp, whether that's in a tent, in a bivy, change out of your main hunting clothes, or if you're in camper here, like change into just your, your regular clothes. So think of it this way, say you go back home and you're wearing all of your hunting clothes and you decide to cook up a big giant egg and bacon sausage breakfast and you're frying up these things, you're getting grease all over you. Now all of a sudden your clothing like absolutely reeks. When people cook like that, I mean, everything stinks. And I mean, you can smell that from like 10 yards away, like humans can. And so when you go out into the elk woods and you walk through the woods, like you are just leaving a giant trail of bacon, egg, sausage, grease scent, you know, all through the woods. In my opinion, you know, if you can reduce that, if you can reduce the amount of scent that you're putting out, you might not spook as much game. You're also going to make the game probably think you're further away than you actually are, all of which might lead to more opportunities at elk. All right, that is a wrap on this vlog. I wanted to keep it short and sweet. So if you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Lots more vlogs to come. We'll see you next time.